thank you for joining Upper Thames for our worship today. And we all know in this Lent season in which we're journeying, it's a wilderness time. And in Upper Thames, of course, we have experienced that wilderness time for many months. But Easter and hope is on the horizon and for us too, because I'm delighted to make an announcement from the Bishop of Bristol about our next priest in charge for the Upper Thames group. The Bishop of Bristol is delighted to announce that the Reverend Debbie Dews will be the next priest in charge of the Upper Thames Benefice, Cricklade, Ashton Keynes, Latin and the Lie. Debbie is at present vicar at St Luke's Brislington in Bristol. She was ordained deacon in 1992 and was amongst the first women made priest in 1994. Her ministry has been varied with time in a large evangelical church in the Midlands and as presenter at Bath Abbey. In the Bristol Diocese, as well as her parochial ministry, she's been one of the team teaching and encouraging our curates. Reverend Canon Debbie Dews said, This is such an exciting move to a benefice full of amazing ministry and love for God. I'm really looking forward to joining the team and seeing where God will lead us all next. Well, like you, all of us are really looking forward to Debbie joining the team and indeed seeing where God will lead us all next. And so let's just pause and pray for Debbie. Gracious God, we thank you for your calling to Debbie to join us at Upper Thames. We thank you for all with which you have blessed her to bring her to this time and this place. And we pray for Debbie in the months ahead as she prepares to join us. And we pray that you will bless her ministry in Cricklade, Ashton Keynes, Latin and the Lie. Amen. Welcome to our Upper Thames Group Worship for this third Sunday in Lent from St John the Baptist Church in Latin. I'm Phil and I'm one of the church wardens. And I'm Pat, I'm a member of the PCC and treasurer. I'm Stuart, I'm the other church warden. In the worship this morning, we'll be exploring how four friends created an opportunity for their paralysed friend to experience the love of God. So as we gather together and yet apart, we start with our opening words. We meet in the name of God, Father, Father Son and, and Holy Spirit. Spirit. Let us praise God for the glory of his grace, for the free, free gift he gave, gave us in his dear Son. Son. We come to our confession and as we offer ourselves to God in penitence and faith, we renew our confidence and trust in his mercy. Let us pray. We confess to you our selfishness and lack of love. Fill us with your spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. We confess to you our fear and failure in sharing our faith. Fill us with your spirit. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. We confess to you our stubbornness and lack of trust. Fill us with your spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. May God, who loved the world so much that he sent his Son to be our Saviour, forgive us our sins and make us holy to serve him in the world. Amen. 
Before we read, we pray the words of the Collect for this Sunday. Let us pray. Merciful Lord, grant to your people grace to withstand the temptations of the world, the flesh and the devil, and with pure hearts and minds to follow you, the only God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If you've been following our Live Lent booklet, or perhaps emails or the app, you might have come across the suggestion that we might like to read one of the Gospels, focusing on how Jesus shows love, and also noticing the range of people that he meets. And I would encourage you to do that. In Mark's Gospel, discovering just how much good news for all there is within its pages. It's the shortest gospel, and it's the gospel for this year. Mark starts with the inauguration of the kingdom of God and quickly moves into Jesus, inviting people to share in God's love and changing their lives, calling fishermen to follow him, casting out evil spirits and healing people from Simon Peter's mother-in-law to a man with leprosy and sustaining his own life with time out. Well, our reading today comes from Mark's Gospel and in today's Gospel news of Jesus, he's drawn the crowds. Hear of what happens as Pat, Phil and Stuart read our Gospel. Hear the Gospel according to Mark, chapter 2, beginning at the first verse. When Jesus returned to Capernaum, the news spread quickly that he was back home. So many people came that, the, so many people came that there was no room, not even near the door. Jesus was preaching his message, and some people came in bringing a paralysed man on a mat. When they couldn't get to Jesus because of the crowd, they made a hole through the roof above his head. Then they lowered the mat on which the man was lying, right down in front of Jesus. When Jesus saw the faith of the man's four friends, he said to the man who couldn't walk, My child, whatever you've done wrong is forgiven. But some of the experts in religious law who were sitting there thought to themselves, what is he saying? He is speaking against God himself. Only God can forgive things we've done wrong. Jesus knew immediately what they were thinking. So he asked them, why are you thinking like this? Is it easier to say to this man who can't walk, whatever you've done wrong is forgiven, or to say, stand up, pick up your mat, and walk. So that you might know that the Son of Man has the right on earth to forgive the things people do wrong, Jesus turned to the paralysed man and said, I say to you, stand up, pick up your mat, and go home. And the man got up, and in front of everyone, picked up his mat and left. Everyone was astonished and praised God, exclaiming, We've never seen anything like this before. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. In typical Mark style, here is action. Four trusted companions wanting help for their paralysed friend. A hole dug in a roof. A man lowered down into the room forgiveness of the past and a command from Jesus for this healed person to get up, arise. What an event! Perhaps almost mini resurrection. A foretaste of what is to come in the end in Mark's Gospel. 
What a transformation for this person who seems to have been paralysed not only in body but in mind and spirit too. And we know there is a strong link between mental or psychological illness or guilt and bodily ill health. And Jesus transforms his wilderness life through forgiveness and healing to wholeness and life in all its fullness. A wow moment. And the paralysed man doesn't ever ask for this. This is grace. Made possible because of four people who carried their friend to Jesus and whose faith Jesus noticed. We too can carry people to Jesus through praying for them and through conversations. Jesus will know their needs just as he knew the need of the paralysed man without him having to say anything. I guess we can probably think of many people who are in a wilderness time or who don't feel able to take full part in community life. In what ways can we create opportunities for them to experience God's love? How can we draw them in to God's love? Questions we might like to ponder at the, as the end of lockdown offers the beginnings of hope and renewal and opportunities to look outwards. If God's love is to reach the corners of the world, it's we who need to take it there. Amen. We come now to our prayers, which Susie will lead. Let us be still before the God who loves each and every one of us and who knows our needs better than we do ourselves. Let us pray. Lord, we give you thanks for the continuing daily signs of spring, for the sunshine that we have enjoyed this week that lightens our hearts and the flowers that we see. All of these help us to remember that we are moving towards an easing of lockdown, however slowly, and back to a time when we will be able to be together again in person, sharing our worship. As part of this, we continue to give thanks for the vaccinations that are being given here and throughout the world. As we think of the reading we have heard and the words that Shirley has shared with us, help us all to persevere in our faith to continue to pray to you for the things that are on our hearts, to ask knowing that you will give, to seek knowing that you will help us find you at the centre of all things. We pray for transformation in people's lives that you bring. We pray for those who are sick in body, mind or spirit, those known to us and also those who we do not know. We pray for your healing touch, giving them strength to endure and that they will know that you are with them. We pray for all those who look after them, for their skill and their compassion and we pray for those who mourn, that they may know your comfort and your peace. Lord, we give you thanks that you are a loving and healing God. Help us always to be willing to be part of your answer to prayer, your hands and feet in this place, 
and help us to hear your word to us and give us the strength to do your will, now and always. Amen. Wherever we are, we are gathered around the Lord's table and in his presence. Welcome to you. The Lord is here. His His Spirit spirit is is with us. us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right. It is our duty and our joy at all times and in all places to give you thanks and praise. Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. And now we give you thanks because he was tempted in every way, as we are, yet did not sin. By his grace, we are able to triumph over every evil and to live no longer for ourselves alone, but for him who died for us and rose again. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Accept our praise, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and his blood, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it. And gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself, made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection, his glorious ascension, and we look for the coming of your kingdom. And with this bread and this cup, we make the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Lord. Christ is the bread of life, When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, Lord Jesus, until you come in glory. Accept through him, our great high priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts, in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your spirit. Inspire us with your love and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him, and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you, in earth and in heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing Blessing and and honour and glory and power be yours for ever and ever. 
Amen. As Jesus taught us, so we pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. In these times, we can't share bread and wine around a common table, so let us pray. Since we cannot together receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into each person's open heart. We pray, O oh, most merciful Redeemer, friend and brother, May we know you more clearly, love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly, day by day. Amen. He who has suffered for our injustices is now present in this bread. He whose body hung on a cross is now offered to us in this cup. I will take this bread and this wine on behalf of the community of Upper Thames churches and parishes. In them, God comes to us so that we might come to God. The body of Christ. Amen. Amen. the blood of Christ. Amen. Amen. We go into this week knowing God's love and with God's blessing and a song in our hearts as we sing there's a wideness in God's mercy. So our final prayer and blessing. May Christ draw us to humility and worship and bring us to see God at work. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with each of you and those you love this week and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.